Welcome to the familiarization of your iPad SP1 automated external defibrillator. This film will go through three sections. One, how to set up your AED. Two, how to use your AED. Three, how to regularly check your AED. This section will show you how to unpack your AED and ensure it is ready for use. After you have removed your iPad SP1 AED out of its box, the first thing to check is that the electrode pad lead is pre-connected to the front of the AED and the electrode pads are firmly in the pad storage compartment on the back of the AED. Next, insert the battery pack into the side of the AED in the direction of the arrow on the label. Push it firmly until you hear it click into place. The iPad SP1 AED will now go through a series of self-tests. Follow the prompts and press the flashing buttons when told to do so. Once this process is complete, the AED will turn off. Check the unit status window to confirm that the AED is now ready for use. This window should show three key things. One, a status indicator. Two, a full battery indicator. Three, a full pads indicator. How to fully check your AED will be discussed later in this film. The AED can now be placed inside the orange carry case. Gently pull the edge of the electro pads through the slot in the side of the bag so that the pull tab is visible. To use the AED, first press the green on button. A green light next to the pads connector will illuminate to show if the electro pads are properly connected. If that light is flashing, please check that the pads are correctly connected to the unit. If the light is constantly lit, the pad connection is good. The AED will then give you visual and audible prompts on what to do. Follow these instructions. The AED will prompt you to remove the pads and place the pads as shown on the pictures. Should you place the pads at a pace faster than the voice prompts, then the iPad SP1 AED will catch up with you. The iPad SP1 AED will then prompt you to ensure that no one is touching the patient. Stand clear. If a shock is advised, the iPad SP1 AED will charge to a predetermined level and advise you to once again check everyone is standing clear and then to press the flashing orange shock button. Press the flashing orange button now. The iPad SP1 AED will then prompt you to commence CPR. Begin CPR now. If you press the flashing blue I button, the AED will commence with CPR voice prompts. This includes a metronome for compression rate and a verbal command for when to breathe for the patient. Breathe. Breathe. If you choose not to press the flashing blue eye button, the iPad SP1 will verbally tell you how long until it reanalyzes. This will be repeated at regular intervals. The AED will also detect if CPR has been performed. Depending on what is detected, it will instruct either to commence CPR or encourage you to continue CPR. Always continue CPR until either the patient wakes up or the AED prompts you to stop so it can reanalyze. This is usually every two minutes. At times, a patient's heart may not require a shock. In this instance, the AED will state, No shock advised. Begin CPR now. In these circumstances, it is impossible to accidentally administer a shock. If the patient is showing no signs of life, you should immediately start CPR. Once again, the AED will say for help with CPR, press the flashing blue I button. This AED features a unique built-in ambient noise detector. This will automatically adjust the volume of the AED depending on the surrounding noise to a maximum of 90 decibels. This is particularly useful in noisy environments. Whilst the majority of cardiac arrests are on casualties who are of adult age, and the incidence of cardiac arrests in children are rare, they are on the increase. The iPad SP1 AED has a feature that allows it to be used on children should the need arise. There is no need to change the pads. Simply lift the cover and slide the switch on the front of the AED to select child mode. The iPad SP1 AED is a robust AED that holds a water resistance rating of IP55. 
and it has passed drop tests to all sides and corners from 1.2 metres. If you have to use your AED, it is always important to inform the attending ambulance staff of how long you have been doing CPR and how many shocks you have given. This is easily done with the iPad SP1 by turning the AED off and then holding down the blue I button for more than one second. The AED will immediately tell you how long it was turned on for and how many shocks it has given. The iPad AED will also collect and store key information during an event. It will record up to three hours per event and it will store the last five events. Should it be required, the data can be retrieved using the SD card or infrared connection. Finally, the iPad SP1 AED can be upgraded should your local resuscitation guidelines and protocols change in the future. Some upgrades can be done via the SD card and others can be done via the connection of the AED to a computer. The iPad SP1 AED performs a daily, weekly and monthly self-test. However, it is still important to visually check your AED on a regular basis. This is done simply by looking at the unit status window, which is visible through the carrying case. This window shows three key things. One, a status indicator. Two, a battery indicator. Three, a pads indicator. First, the status indicator will indicate if the iPad SP1 is working correctly. It does this by carrying out daily, weekly and monthly self-tests. If all of the tests are passed successfully, the indicator will show a circle. If a problem has been found, the indicator will change to show a cross and the I button will flash red. Press the flashing red I button and the iPad SP1 will verbally tell you more about the issue. Secondly, the battery status indicator will inform you of how much battery power remains in the non-rechargeable battery. When installed, the battery has enough power to sit on standby for five years. When the battery indicator is at one bar, a new battery should be ordered. When the battery indicator changes from one bar to no bars, the battery should be replaced at the earliest opportunity. Thirdly, the pads indicator tells you that the pads are connected to the AED and whether they are in date. If the pads indicator is full, the pads are in date. If the pads indicator is showing as half full, the pads will expire within three months. New pads should be ordered. If the pads indicator is empty, then the pads are out of date and they should be replaced at the earliest opportunity. We hope that you've found this familiarization film useful. This is not meant as a replacement for hands-on training.